three and we're live we're live we're we're both in well i guess i'm sometimes in this location but you're you've never been in that location before for our live stream location before i'm at jurassic park like literally where they filmed the movie that's awesome dude i don't know if that mountain looks as awesome to you guys as it does to me but it looks pretty awesome it's it's pretty fucking awesome we're about to go on a utv tour i don't normally wander around with a helmet on but uh I mean, I'll jump in a UTV. I'll probably jump off when we're about to do that. But you know, I had to say what's up to my peeps. Oh yeah, no, we're uh, we're gonna talk about all kind of stuff tonight. You know, we're gonna talk. Uh, I couldn't think of anything for the title because I, I knew I was gonna be in here doing some work. But I was like, oh, we'll go over ways to get audio into your system without a head unit. Yeah, absolutely. Because there was good ideas. There was, there was a post did, about I, that. How to alleviate engine noise? The guys have been troubleshooting the the van, and we think that when I when my alternator my my stock alternator fried and they warranted it, they gave me a new one. But I think when we we we, we are strongly suspect that it's the new alternator that's causing the noise because they yeah. haven't been able to alleviate. It. It's like it's literally it could have a bad diode or something letting a lot of lot letting a, <coughs> AC current in. Yeah, AC exactly. voltage, whatever. Yeah, so we we need to. See if we can address that. Need a- Trap House TV. When will you guys allow super chats so supporters can show appreciation? Um, I'm actually not sure how to do that. Uh, yeah, actually, I-, I tell you what. What what we've always said is, if y'all want to show appreciation, we'd rather you go like go to our websites and like buy a shirt or something. You know, that way you get something. You know, you I get mean, you get. You could jump on gatelyaudio.com and buy a gigantic speaker box or something. Right now. Yeah. Right now. You, you could, could buy a, you could buy a ten thousand dollar speaker box right now. If you could you could if you want to, you could. I'll even give you a quietly loud discount. But I tell you what, that would make his ATV ride way better. I just it know would, it would. It's like if somebody bought a bunch of shit off my site right now, that would be more fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, but what I'm working on is you don't believe it. What you got there, how cute. NVI thing uh, for yeah. for mobile toys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they've Very got cool. a, they've got a Dodge truck with um, four DC level six fifteens on two nine Ks in there right now. Yeah, they were they were telling me about that. Um, Jeff gave me a call and had some questions about some of that stuff, and I was like, oh boy, this sounds pretty wild. But- yeah, basically. They got the skills to alleviate that. They had some questions about the batteries and stuff, and oh yeah, how to deal with some of that. I was like, oh yeah, this is all of the wire absolutely necessary. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, oh yeah, trap house TV. You, you can you can ask a question, my dude. We'll answer. He said, uh, understood. But for a five dollar quick question or comment would be nice, bro. We so I try my best to read all the comments. Yeah, we rate them all. We answer them all. I'm I'm I, not able to really see all the chat. Does it show up when I do? Oh no, I don't want to do that. Now I've gone. Okay, yeah. If I, I I can't really see the chat, so if if there's a question that pertains a little more to me, Drew will read it back yeah. for me while I'm on. So. And Steve should be here at some point. Uh, he's working yeah. late tonight, so or he might not be here. He he might just stay working. I don't know. He might be just making that money. Got to do yep. what we got to do. Ugh. Yep, yep. We fly home tomorrow. What is the difference between the Salt 5 channel and the Gately Audio 5 channel? Well, one's blue, one's silver. Mm-hmm. Uh, mine has dual inputs and a slightly different chipset. Oh, like dual power, dual power dual inputs? Dual power inputs, yep. Ooh. And that, that helps it make a touch more power. And then the newer Texas Instrument chipset inside should help it sound a little prettier. It is essentially the same board initially, but, but I have but, a different chipset. They may have upgraded in the... They may have just made a running change and done that, but the dual inputs yeah. to make it make a little more power. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's a, and I mean that's it. I mean, if you were going to have the same board as another amp, that's a really good place to start. That's the first thing I did. I was like, give me the dual input on that, and oh, you know what? I'm sorry, the five channel doesn't. It's the it's if somebody. I'm, I apologize. It only has the single input. It does have the different chipset though. But it's gotcha. not my bad. It's the it's the three K. Versus the 3900. They're essentially the same board. Different chipset. Yeah. Dual inputs. So Gotcha. Yeah. What's at, at that point, the dual inputs, I think that matters. It, uh, on that amp especially. On the on the five channel, I don't think it would make a, a difference. Like, um, I got an amp right here. I'll see if I can. I can't really. Anyway, I got this JP amp. 
four channel, then big thousand watt per channel thing. It's got dual zero gauge inputs. I'm thinking, nice. brother, that's a lot for a four channel. Yeah, and and you know if you're running, I mean if you're running subs and stuff, the the big thing, right, is, is yeah. Like, let's say you want to make a thousand watts, but a thousand watts on frequencies under eighty hertz is going to draw a shitload more current than what a thousand watts over eighty hertz is going to oh, draw. Absolutely. Like literally, like like twenty percent versus eighty percent, right? Oh, hundred percent. Right? Oh yeah, hundred yeah, percent of of twenty yep. and eight. Yes, all that. <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, I got confused because I just had this conversation yesterday. Somebody was like, you know, is that the same board as the Salt 3? I was on the phone with a customer a few days ago, and I was like, it is indeed the same board as the Salt 3. But I had dual inputs on that because I felt like that was going to give us a power advantage. And, and in the newer, you know, they said we could use the the Texas Instrument chipset that, would, that should improve overall sound quality. Now, mind you, it for sure would be effective in the five channel where you're going to hear that but the oh yeah the, the mono yeah. block you're not going to hear shit no there's uh yeah. there's no and there's a uh, i've seen a lot of people asking more and more about how you know does this amp have good sound quality this and that and man it's a uh, for a sub amp it you have to buy a pretty garbage amp to hear it not sound you, fine. you could you i would say that for the most part a, a, a full bit bridge brazilian style amp. yeah versus a half bridge or or a or a Quality. higher technology full bridge you know yeah what I mean? like a kicker full bridge or a or a jl yeah. full bridge. they're all gonna sound to 98 percent of people 99 percent of people are gonna sound fine now but that's when you get into like but uh, like yeah but the gately amp has dual input so it's gonna make some more power you'll hear that difference yeah sure. on the 3k yeah the five channel the five channel, they're they're very much the same. I don't know that you would uh, see a performance advantage. We might handle heat a little bit better on the five channel because we have quite a bit more heat sink material and surface. But otherwise, it's pretty much it. All right, kids. I All right. am going to go get in this UTB. And uh, I'm going to go um, hopefully get eaten by a dinosaur. Nice. Yeah. I mean, get it on video if you do. For. Yeah. You guys want to see? They got a raptor in a cage right over here. Show you guys that before we go. Yeah, I want to see that. So it's got it's got there's a high voltage thing going on right here, and we have a we have a raptor right here. It's my homeboy. Check that out. Yeah. So, all right, kids. Um, I'll talk to you guys later. Later, bro. Later. Hi, <laughs> right, everybody. Now you're just stuck with me. It is what it is. So let me see if I can turn this camera on. I'll show you what we're working on here. A little better angle. There we go. All I'm doing is just soldering, just tinning the ends of these wires. Nothing crazy. So they'll go into these XT30s a little better. There's XT30s right here. Let's see, Bobby, how hard would it be to make an amp 2 hertz to 30 hertz frequency response? Uh, like, that's all it reproduces? What are you asking? I'm trying to see if you hit Bobby has caused an uproar on Facebook groups over Scar rant on the last podcast. Yeah, 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 you'll have that. Subs up, port back design, better subs closer to the front of the box or closer to the back? So generally, I would want it closer to the back, over the ports, if possible. Um, that way, they're not directly in front of the port opening. But that's one of those things where, like, if you're looking for every tenth of a dB, you're going to test it. Why would you want an amp that doesn't play over 30 hertz, though? So what I'm doing is working on this. How high can you do the fourth is still? I know it's, so fourth order should tune near resonance, which should be in that situation, probably 42, 43. A lot of low end extension comes from the sealed side, sealed 
chamber from uh, cone control through there. I don't know why kicker does that. So it will slow down air. It will slow down, you know, the uh, not air, but the pressure wave, if you will, inside the enclosure. We'll lower it. So it'll make it sound like it's playing lower. I've not got a demo of the BM11s yet. What up, Mark? Two hertz to 30 hertz. Golly. What you're going to want mostly is the amp with fantastic control over the drivers. I can at you next time, but I don't know who you are. Andy, we're working on the an MVI DSP adapter thing. Turns speaker wire into RCOs, makes the needed wiring flips. Uh, we're sending this one out to mobile toys first thing in the morning. Gonna next day this bad boy to them. Yeah, well, I wasn't solo at first. Uh, Bobby was in. Bobby's on vacation, and he he popped in for a little bit. Come on, get on the thing, you bitch. No. It does. What's up, Craig? Well, Craig, you have subs everywhere. <laughs> you have subs completely front to back, dude. <laughs> you you can't avoid having at least some of them in front of the port. <laughs> Come on, bro. Craig's got, I think it's 915s or something. No wall in an expedition. Absolutely just ridiculous. The loudest no wall I've ever heard. Hands down. Uh, parallel sixth at eight and thirty-six. Well, that's uh that's one way to go about it. You should, you should, I'm assuming that's still Craig saying he sent me a message. You sent me a message, I'll be able to look at it after after this podcast. <laughs> So, one thing we're going to talk about is as soon as, as soon as I finish these two connections, we'll talk about head unit stuff and how to get audio without one. Because I feel like oh, we, we should be leaving head units, especially some of these loud vehicles, leaving head units behind. When will they come out with amps that have electric meters to tune? I, I don't want amps to, to, to adjust that. I want I want DSP control of that, which is that's gonna be that's the one thing we're talking about with the um, you know getting sound into your system without a red head unit DSP. You're gonna you're, you're gonna need one. You're gonna need one, and freaking they're getting the quality DSPs are getting pretty affordable. So you don't you, know, you can do LDAC. So this piece that I have has LDAC, yes, but the other one, which I'm going to be talking about, the uh, SMSL piece, doesn't have Bluetooth. So it's USB only, which is going to be how I'm using this one is the USB input. DSP should be for everyone. There's no reason not to run one. It makes your whole system more better. But if you don't want to, then you don't want to. But leave in performance behind. Yeah, this is the uh, I actually have it right here, a little piece, which I've, I've showed on stream before. A little berry back, just a little. All right, lethal two eight seven eight. What is one good reason to not have a DSP?
need to get on, get in there. I think what I need is one of them like, fume extraction systems for in here, huh? Oh, shit would kill me. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, these things are great. That was, uh... These replaced my, um... I still have them. I have a set of Sennheiser Momentum 2s, I think. The over years. Yeah, but then you'd be spending the money for an amplifier just to... For a more expensive amplifier that only sets crossovers more accurately. You know, it's going to be more expensive. Whereas with a DSP, you can set... Huh, crazy thing is, I'm going to be talking about the Down for Sound DSP today. Ha! Not even the JL one. Because the Down for Sound one is going to be in a lot more people's budget and has 12 channels of out of uh, well, one, one of ours has 12 channels of control and optical in and out, which is what I'm talking about. Yes, a port could be too long. Um... There's too much port volume that the uh, sub can't deal with. Is the easiest way to put it. Like the combination port area and length, you get a port volume. How much displacement you have to move inside the port, you can you can definitely cause issues with that. That Arc software looks pretty good. I, I looked at it the other day for the first time. It looks pretty solid. If that's all you pay for your DSP, you bought an EQ, not a DSP. What? Talk about crossovers? Probably. I like the way your said it. Man, it's organized-ish only because it has to be. Because I don't have any space. Y'all can't even see what I'm doing. What a disaster. Let me see if I can drag this camera over. No, that doesn't seem too long. Oh, I mean, it could be. But it's one of those things where you kind of got to do them. I got to do the math on it. What? Did you quit falling over? And I saw someone ask um, fourth order or sixth order for a Chevy single cab. That's up to, it depends on what you want to sound like. I prefer fourth orders for basically everything. I just like the way they sound. That's just me. Variable steel and vented underseat truck box. How much more power does a truck box? That's a tough one because like I've heard some really loud underseat ported boxes, but I've heard some really some pretty loud, great sounding underseat sealed boxes. So ah, it's tough because a lot of guys will just shove a ton of subs underneath the seat and make up for it with power. Whereas a lot of steel enclosures won't won't need that won't need that power to compensate because they're not running you know gigantic subs in a small ported box. So what we're doing here, which I need to make this so you can view it. There we go. That'll work. Putting soldering on the ends to FT30, and then heat shrink on the ends. Glued heat shrink, so it has a sealant in it. And then just kind of, oop, that's now we're done. What ratio would you recommend, or is that based off? I don't rec ratios should never be a goal. A ratio for like a bandpass is just a the byproduct of everything else. Kind of like a port per cube for ported, you know, for the port should never be a goal. It's a rule of thumb to give you a rough idea of where to start if you don't have any idea what you're doing. What idea did you have, Jeff?
So, wait, as I said, I'd finish these two first. Oh, y'all gonna, y'all, y'all gonna like this little thing. Look at this little, this little, this little bad boy here. 3D printed vice. I got it. circuit board. From the amp lab. We're doing these RCA connections. Jason's got it. There's no like perfect answer. It's like even even a design for me or who or Hunter or whoever, like as long as the person knows what they're doing, we're going to get you in a in, in we're going to get you to a very good starting point. But there will always, one hundred percent of the time, be gains to be had inside the vehicle with testing. No one, zero people ever have got it perfect on the first try. There are always gains to be had. If you're to put the three ways in the set van, uh, pillar tweeters, uh, you can be built different. I mean, I'm built different. <laughs> um, tweeters and mids in the pillars, mid base in the doors. If you want it to be set up for like the driver or driver and passenger, or whatever. So just stripping back some wire. So we can Oh. Bye. Infinite baffle kicks. Mid, mid base in the kicks then. Let's go. So I mean technically, yeah. So like with the new down for sound DSP, it has uh Bluetooth input with uh APTX HD. So I mean it's gonna it plays up to like nineteen thousand hertz, which is plenty. We can we can't hear any any higher than that, but uh yeah it's got bluetooth streaming in like right into it so that's going to be the, my recommendation for a lot of people is is that is use the bluetooth input on these newer quality dsps and that's actually one thing that delayed the uh that's delayed the down for sound dsp a little bit is I'm, i made the recommendation of hey you need to make this change and this change for this for these inputs based on my you know my testing and my analysis and, and they did it but but it pushed it back the dsp a couple months but I was really excited that they decided to take that little monetary loss of doing it quickly and to do it right. So you'll be able to stream Bluetooth, APTX, HD, AppDex, or what I was pronounced directly into it. So that's going to be my answer for a lot of people. And I, I was telling Price the other day in, in the in the chat that man, like I hope you hope you hope you order a lot of these because they're going to sell. It's going to help change the game for DSPs in the base hit world. Because I know a lot of people have been avoiding it. Because, you know, they're, they're, DSP can be complex. Especially if you jump in straight into running full active, which you don't have to do, by the way. You can uh, you can absolutely run your normal passive crossovers and just put the, EQ, the DSP in place for now. And use it as a fancy EQ as you learn what it does and how it works. Absolutely. So your head unit probably has built-in control for what front, rear, sub. You might have one that can run in what network mode, like a Pioneer or some JVC and Ken would do it, uh, where you can do like tweeter, mid-range, mid-base. You could separate them like that. Uh, this is individual channel control of crossovers, crossovers and EQ, which is which is a, re a really big thing. Um, so like a lot of these super loud builds. Uh, there's no, there's no alignment done for anything. Like, let's take for example the Raiden truck. 
first time we tuned it, we just put the we just put the microphones in the middle of the truck and pretend we can't even measure time. We'll just do EQ. Just getting the left and right to be the same loudness using the RTA is going to make it sound better because you're having equal output from left and right. And then getting rid of any gigantic EQ ups and downs that unless you're trained to hear, you won't be able to hear. I mean, I, I can't hear a lot of that stuff. Just don't have enough time. So you use a little RTA mic, which I'm going to be making a whole little video about with the downtown DSP actually showing you how to measure for these big EQ, like big RTA ups and downs and how to, how to fix it. Using the DSP. Jerry, everyone is not here. Kicker Q or RFP3? Ooh, Kicker Q. And I used to be an RF Rockford guy. My Cobra was all Rockford, Power Series, everything. This one isn't. I mean, actually, this one was going to be until I realized you have an 8-channel. The only person who's done an 8-channel. So, yeah. But this actually finished today. But I'm going to have to make the 8-channel one because I've never made the 8-channel one. So, a disaster. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it was it was mid print, and I I have the I have the cables, the uh the Deutsch connectors on my desk, thinking, all right, we got all six, and I got to thinking, I don't know what made me think about the wait. He has an eight channel now. He didn't do the six. I was like, God damn it! But that should print overnight tonight. Oh no, yeah, the colors actually. I'm very happy with the colors. It's hard to see, but they actually match the amplifier very good. So I'm very happy about that. But yeah, eight channel. <laughs> Would you do a 350.2 on each of PWK eights? That's a what's the PWK? Is that the um crescendo eights? But anyway, Jerry, uh Bobby's in Hawaii on vacation. He joined for a minute. Steve's at work. Uh, I don't think you need that much power for tweeters. I know that. You like like we use a shockingly low amount of power on speakers, tweeters for sure. So that is, and that, that's actually one thing I want to talk about when I have a, whenever the whole you know, you know next week whenever everyone's here. This recent obsession with everybody running incredible power on these mids and highs and i don't know if they realize how little of it they're actually using what's up bro what's up kibo kibo Bo. they think th well three of them currently later later adam later brody well three three of them currently plotting a fourth order solo for themes hell yeah hell yeah so they will work in smaller enclosures if if needed. We have our 12s in 1.84 cubes each or something like that in the wagon. Yeah, Blake's pretty... Yeah. So like, I've clamped a tweeter. Full rip tater chip. I mean, letting this thing eat. It was like 7 watts. And the tweeter was not happy about life. Okay, so A, B, C, D. So this is D... Okay. 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 Oh yeah, yeah. Tweeters, tweeters and mid ranges use effectively no power. Uh, I once clamped the Tahoe's Neo Pros at at full rip, 120 something dB full range in the cabin, subs off. It was like 39 watts a mid or something, just something incredibly low. And I was like, wow. But like like true mid base is getting closer to sub territory, so you do end up needing a chunk of power. But even then, you really don't. I mean, trust me, I'm not one to tell you don't get more power. 
But yeah, no, no, no. They they, they just don't need power. That's just all it is. They're just incredibly efficient. That's it. And they just and they can't handle that much power realistically. Like if you ever clamp like 150 watts to a to a mid range, you're not gonna have a mid range left for for very long at least. Now if you're running it as a mid base, then yeah, you'll you'll use a bunch of power because it it needs that excursion. Where did you get the fan? No clutch. Uh, O'Reilly. Just a heavy duty fan. Is if the box is built correctly, is it okay to put the amp on the box? I mean, the box is probably going to be the most solid part of your vehicle. So, yes. I mean, I don't know if you if y'all have seen some of these base vehicles, but they'll they'll mount the amps to this metal bracket and you know, metal amp rack, and it's the whole amp rack moving an inch and a half. Hi, that's me in the Tahoe. Uh, Which I drove it a little bit today. Well, the D for us DSP would be a better DSP than me. I don't know, and I don't know enough about the Mini DSP to have a good answer. It, uh, I know the D for us will have optical input and output, and Bluetooth control, you know, Bluetooth input, along with the ability to to, to adjust it via Bluetooth using the app. And that, the Mini DSP may very well have all those features. I just do not know. Favorite sub for like loud bass, probably probably still ZV5, man. I I own SDDNs now. Like I got rid of my ZV5 for SDDNs, but I just a ZV5 is just the goat, bro. That thing is just they were just always amazing. They really were. So ZV5 for beating down the block and then if you want to be, be loud and you know you want something that sounds really really good still zv5 because of the way jago designs his suspensions um so still zv5 now if we're talking just more traditional i want it to sound really good uh w6 probably is a really good middle ground W7 is technically a more linear, better sub, but it doesn't have a lot of the traditional sound that people like. So a lot of people say they prefer the W6 over W7 for that reason. ZV5 or ZV6? Probably, probably ZV6. I just have never owned it myself, so... I try to only speak on things that I have owned or have a lot of ex hands-on experience with. Demon Duncan, these are the best option for base amps. Least amount of moving parts. Uh, what? You know, just about the exact same thing, but not the limited amount of category. Okay. Whenever we get some, actually, hopefully, pretty soon. Once I once I get this Tahoe done, I'm gonna. I might need to do before that. I need to go out to Duncan's van and and Matt Brown's truck and do some wiring. If you had to do over in your career, what would you change? Hmm. It's a good one. Um I don't know. Maybe would have got into the more advanced things sooner. Like um 
like the electrical stuff, like the electrical analysis and, lear- and learning how all that works. I might have, I would have done that sooner, I think. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with how. If I could, you know what, I would make that cloning machine. I would get the cloning machine figured out first. That would probably be the move, honestly. Cloning machine. Well, not, not even necessarily uh, higher education for it. Um, some of the smartest people I know in car audio don't have formal education. And they're engineers at, like, very large car audio companies. So, and that's actually uh, one reason why I was told that um, the director of no, they're not available. And that's, that's one reason why I didn't, you know, say this is the one you should get because you really can't get them anymore. But no, it's uh, one of the directors of one of these companies said that that's why they like they're one of their guys working with me is that neither him or I have um, formal education, you know, formal higher education. So we think differently than most engineers at the company. We don't think logically about a bunch of stuff. We think why like i want this thing to do this thing why isn't it doing it where your normal engineer will tell you oh it's for this reason me and the other guy are like ah well what if we just make it do it uh jim bobby is in hawaii steve is at work so i am in the shop working on something for uh mobile toys Which I gotta just say, like they're my friends. I've known them for a while. I just did a slice that took me four hours to do. Golly, um, it's it's always an honor to do really cool builds for like actually for for anybody. I was, I was gonna say for multiple, but no, just for anybody. Like people wanting me to make stuff for their builds is super awesome, man. I um. I've purposely limited like how many of these I want to make because they are pretty time consuming, especially with their they've all been a little different, which I kind of didn't plan on, but it is what it is, I guess. I would assume the direct chronic subs are gonna be pretty solid. I mean, those guys know how to make they I mean that's what they do. Yeah, so, so the, the names are a little out there, but hey, it's fine. You know, Car Audio is a bunch of out there type of dudes. Yeah, man, I, I enjoy it. Like, it's really awesome seeing the stuff that I've made in these builds and, like, at these shops. And I appreciate that, Eric. And, uh, sometimes I don't know... What's going to happen? I don't know where I'm going. But, uh, I'm going to keep on trying to have fun along the way, at least. Ah, uh, he better. Well, he better reinforce that firewall. Golly. I'm excited to see his build coming together, man. That's such a, that's, he's such a good dude. Just, mm, great guy. That's one thing that I've uh, really been really been focusing on is, you know, because I get to thinking about it like there's no there's no end point. Right. There's no like, oh, well, I'm done. You know, especially like like in car audio, like there's no I'm done point. So I just have to enjoy the entire process the whole time as much as I can. And I mean, the last last little bit, I haven't really been enjoying a whole lot of it. It's been. 
I, well, I stress myself out a lot, which is, it is what it is, right? But, yeah. It depends, man. Um, so, as someone who often has a long turnaround time and does my best to be organized and I fail pretty often at it. I've had things slip, slip through that take by long or longer. Shit. Um, now if it's like, if it's a handmade custom thing, things can absolutely take time. If it's a production type unit, like you're, they only make this, they make one of these. Then at that point, there's no reason not to hire people and scale up, but like hand, like stuff like this one offs and, even custom enclosures, it's, it's pretty hard to hire people sometimes. So maybe, you know, I think, uh, like, I know Bobby's got, if you order like one of them super expensive $10,000 boxes, you're waiting. CNC cut, hand assembled. <clears throat> CNC automates a lot of the process. But again, I don't know. Now, if it was crazy expensive, they may they need to hire some people, especially especially if it's CNC cut and hand it's hand assembled. CNC cut means they're, is, they're probably notching the wood, so everything kind of will just go together. But I don't know their process, so maybe not. A CNC comments responded to Halfridge Fullbridge recently. What is your irks? So Fullbridge, when the people say Fullbridge, they assume Brazilian cheap Fullbridge, but the full bridge architecture is used e everywhere. Most kicker amps, JL amps, Rockford amps, these high quality, nice amps, full bridge. Most pro audio things are full bridge, like in the pro world. That's all going to be full, full bridge design where both positive and negative wires are, are driven signal. Um, where had, you know, so but people in the Cardi community assume all full bridge cheap because of Terror Amps and those other cheap companies, which I mean, even their stuff has seemingly gotten better over the years. So, I mean, that's great. But so any multi channel amplifier that is bridged is now full bridge amplifier. Any strapped half bridge amps, like two salt eight strapped, that is now a single full bridge amplifier. That's all it is. Yeah, Blake, for one-off stuff, you know, you're right. And that's what I was saying. Like, it, if it's a production 410s box, it's hard to justify that. If it's a one-off, they're probably doing a lot of it by hand or designing it, then CNCing it, then hand assembling it. It's one of those things. It's, it's hard to know which is which, is which you know? Okay. He's done... That done. Okay. Okay. And full bridge amps are generally smaller too, which is uh, they can often be a little cheaper because of the you know less components needed. And that's not in a bad way. It's just how the architecture functions. Yep, I agree, Blake. 100%. So, all right, so we're just still trucking away on this thing. This is one reason why I like. I didn't want to sell a whole lot of these, right? Because I like them. It's all done by hand. It's not a uh, no robots over here, unfortunately. And also, sorry if this is a boring stream. I just didn't. 
doing these by yourself is kind of difficult. Kind of, it's hard to make things entertaining whenever you don't do it all the time. You know, it is what it is, I suppose. Will you ten? Or not, that's fine too. I don't want you to. Uh, this is something. SS3000. Ooh, I want to get a photo on both of you. So I don't use my whole bed. Maybe say, do I tell you what a really solid option is for something like that? 315s. I did one for a local buddy. Three ZV4 retros on a JP83 in a single cab. And that thing was, uh, it was rowdy. See, 315s. Boy, we don't, we on the same wavelength on that one. Inside the box of fiberglass. Uh, so resin itself doesn't add much, uh, if any, strength to the inside of an enclosure. It uh, it can make it smoother, which is cool. But that's about it. Um, people were adding fiberglass to the inside of enclosures, like MDF enclosures, to seal the wood because MDF is rather porous. And like I know guys who use MDF on their CNCs to as vacuum tables because you can just pull air straight through MDF with that first, so you know MDF has that smooth layer, you take that off, and air will just flow right through MDF. So that's where a lot of this sealing comes from with, um, you know, fiberglass. But people, like I said, people use them for vacuum tables to hold down other sheets of wood because it'll, it'll just let that much air flow through. Now, making the inside of your box smooth, I will never say don't do. Make that thing as smooth as you can, however you can. And if that involves fiberglass resin, then th that involves fiberglass resin. It is what it is. Smooth and strong are the keys to a loud enclosure. You could really have a pretty piss poor design. And as long as it's built well. As long as it's built well, it's going to sound right. 45s, so very controversial. 45s don't help. If you look at some of the, like, they'll help make things stronger if they're not stronger. And they'll help in situations where you need to drop airspace. Other than that, you won't find a 45 in a lot of these hyper-efficient vehicles, which blew my mind when I first started noticing this. Um, I think it was some of Chris Munson's stuff. I kind of started noticing that all the boxes were 90-degree 90, 90 angles in, in the corners. I was like, hmm, interesting. So I just kept looking, and sure enough, you look at a bunch of these super-efficient vehicles. They're just all just 90s in the corners. And I was like, huh. Got to be a reason behind that, right? Check your door. Is there a noodle there? Come on, bro. Go lay down. I need to put a doggy door. Yes, smooth. Smooth is more better. Go lay down, bud. You have a cushion. Don't lay on the floor. Yep, you'll see smooth or 
like in Carlos's van, like you see 90s or you'll see just a soft round over. You won't see any giant 45s in anything. Ah, I like that. The final frontier. I like that. I love a good nickname like that. So this MBI box, normally they get the Deutsch connectors that come out of them. Uh, this one, so, so technically, I guess it could be an anything box, but MBI box. Windier. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna want to probably uh, go to the slot so you can do less port area because you're gonna want to increase. Uh, how you're, you're gonna want to increase vent mock or vent velocity, whatever. I don't personally quite understand the obsession with wind, but I get where it's where it comes from. It looks really badass on video. People will make some crazy sacrifices for it that just don't sound good. Also, more power, baby. That's always the answer. More power, baby. I was like, I thought I just finished. Oh, oh, what was that for now? Get some heat shrink out. Bro, you have a cushion. I don't get it. But I tell you, uh, Brian, audio fanatics, bro, I've been following your stuff for a long ass time. You do some really killer work, man. Very envious. Well, mids, 65 is low for some mid bases. Oh, wait. Wait, what? Well, then I guess it's your old stuff that I just, I, I remember the most, which, fair enough. I feel old sometimes. And side note, boat stuff is wild, bruh. Oh, don't, don't downplay boats. As you know. <laughs> yeah, you got he's on his cushion. He, on his cushion. A 
A JP83, huh? The one that was in that house I need to bring in here and put on the test bench. Oh, yeah, dude. Boat guys, side by side guys, motorcycle. Dude, they're. Whew! They'll throw some money at them. Get in there. Yeah, this is why I don't want to sell that many of them. Two tens is mid base. Oh, biggest thing is going to have to be getting that getting getting that phase alignment dialed in. This phase is so important. Is very 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 important for um, mid base to sub base transition. Oh, it wasn't done with the soldering thing. Oh no. So crossover is part of it, um, and time is another big part of it. But it's uh, as long as you have enough control channels, it's it's something that we can definitely work through. Sit, ooh, I'm on six, six and six isn't enough. Well, I mean, it could be enough acoustic, acoustically, but electrically. What's up, dude? Nothing. Me working on this stuff, just answering whatever questions I see pop up. Um, I always just my, me personally. I start everything at negative twenty four dB link with Riley, because because we know what the phase relationship change is going to be. Um, it gives you a good starting point for a system like that. As long as you have enough control. Like, like DSP control for each channel, like the gains you'll get by properly by getting time right, just time by itself, time right to arrival at your head or the pastor's head or wherever you want to tune for, huge increase in output. And then if we take the time to phase align everything properly, it's even it's even bigger difference. And then, oh, I guess I might as well talk about that. It's a, that Southern sound that Southern sound quality, that strictly sound quality post that Nick had up. That um, I guess an attempt to make me look bad, but whatever. Yeah, that car had problems, man, and uh, that car had perfect summation whenever we got done with it between the mid mid base and the sub. When we but when we dropped it off. And it got measured. It didn't. So I don't know, man. How does a car go from perfect summation to not without something being changed? Uh, you start with a year, but at some point, what? Like, I'm sure you're near somebody who can, who can, we can, we can get with them and help measure with, like, with Max. It's just, it's just the easiest way because of real time phase analysis. You get, get the thing dialed in. Would a salt six that have enough for? Yeah. So so, Curry, you can't want wind and SPL. They are completely different. Completely different things. The builds that you need to do either one are totally different. No, nope. So trunk build. Um, the wagon's been taking a lot of the priority recently. Uh, well, and then Nick got a truck, like a 2000 crew cab Chevy truck. So it's OBS, but it's 2000, 2500. Um, he's been working on that, and it's been working. I'm hoping every weekend I'm trying to make a little progress on the uh, Tahoe. So hoping to get that done soon and... Yeah, that'd be nice. I, dro I drove it a little bit today just with the pillars playing. I was like, ah, loudness. 
Sounds good. I agree. I'm ready to get the Tahoe out there with the new system. As long as they sound good, I'm all I'm all for some stunt walls. People just don't. Only recently have they started sounding better. I'm all for it, but at shows, aim that shit somewhere else, bro. Come on. Like we're trying to communicate, especially the guys who set up a booth or whatever. And we're trying to communicate with people. Come on, aim that shit the other way. So I didn't build the ones I have. Uh, Brad Knobloch built those. Uh, there's um, there's some things that I just know I'm not good at, and making things pretty like that, never done it. I know I'm not that good at it, so I have no problem outsourcing such things. Hell, twenty of them playing at the same time would be even be all right, as long as they're playing the same damn thing. So I need one more oh thing from over here. Which I thought I grabbed a whole stick of, but I guess I didn't. Well, why did you put subs on the front of your box, Craig? Why'd you do that? That's unacceptable. Yeah, and his, I don't even think Steve's already had any EQ tuning done. That was just crossover set, which that's what blows me away every time I, I mess with some of the, uh, some really loud stuff like that is how easy it is to make it sound like pretty good. Like just crossover set will sound better than most stunt walls, which makes you realize that they're not even doing that. Gosh, golly. Absolutely too many tweeters. You need like one tweeter for every two or three mids at most. What I got done to the Tahoe, I got it, the wall cleaned out. <laughs> um, hoping this weekend to get the wall unbolted. So it's bolted to the truck. We didn't bolt it straight. So it's not built into like the truck a lot of walls would be. So I bought it with the shell already in it from 
got a hell of a deal on it. It was my design for some 99 15s. Bought the whole truck for three grand. So I don't really argue that. But the wall wasn't bolted in place. Like the, it was basically just a built bo big box built inside the tile. It's not the way I, I'd build it now for sure. But I digress. We got to straighten that out, bolt it back in place, seal it to the B pillar properly, and then we can start making the inside pretty again and start and then put some SDDNs in. Just going to start piecing it together, just doing what little bit by little bit. What are these little distros? Talk about these, or what? In, what part in particular are you asking about? Pillar speakers, like in the A pillar. That's where they go. And my Tahoe has a uh, four stereo integrity threes and four um, stereo integrity tweeters per pillar. Uh, that's where that's where they belong, man. Up in the pillars. Uh, these are. For our to slide over the RCAs, just to make life easier. If you, if you look at most SQ vehicles, they have speakers in the pillar, so that's where it needs to be. Um, I know it needs. That's where I feel it is best. And that is the general consensus among others. I don't want to say anything's the best because, look, oh, forbid. Got them people upset. See, I said that JLC7s are a more fun speaker to listen to than Focal Utopias, which even the owners of Focal Utopia say, say the same. But that me saying that upset people. The, the DDA series stuff, if that's what you're talking about, sounds fantastic. Uh, it really, really sounds great. I have a set of the A series tweeters that are you know, three, I had the full A series set in my um, office, and I'll be putting the tweet, at least the tweeters and threes, in my SQ truck to test just because they sound so good. Yep, dude, the A series are great. 100% slept on. That's just in my office right now, and I'd love them. I haven't been in one recent enough time to remember what it looks like. Um, it, it's weird what makes things good SQ vehicles. And it's not often what, even what I would think. Very few are good from the factory, but like there are some that have just really good factory OEM locations, specifically for like mid base, like the 2023 Camry. Fantastic factory mid base locations, probably some of the best. So they don't ha uh, they don't have to be Y splitter. You can, I, I could run them. Like that in a row. So if you want to see some of some of these, uh, Slam Panda RCA boxes use these, uh, a version of these. Um, LAF maybe has a version of these also. It's just to make connections. Boy, look at Jack did show up. Damn, he's right. I thought he was goofing. He was serious. Add a fruit. Ooh, it sounds familiar. God, why does it sound familiar? I don't know why. It sounds familiar. I don't know why. Let me just see.
at a fruit. Oh, okay. Raspberry Pi stuff. Do electronics. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's why I've seen that. I've been looking at like small computer stuff like that. Eating? Like eating superchargers? That's, that's either the A in that name. Oh, I heard him. Y'all gotta remember, I'm not old. Like, like a whole bunch, a whole bunch of y'all peepaws. I'm young, young buck. So you'll lose, you will have some signal de uh, degradation over over a large, large enough. You know, distribution or whatever. Um, but it's very minimal, and you can easily correct for it with enough. If I turn it up. Hmm. Hmm. I think AGMs absolutely have a place. I mean, a lot of people just don't want lithium in their car. It's, especially if they don't want DIY lithium, which I think a lot of people struggle to understand. Is that some people just don't want it. And also, like, I wouldn't put a DIY lithium in my mama's car. There's ain't no chance. Or, hell, I wouldn't put most lithium in my mama's car. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, Jeff. I think the loss would be very minimal. And then if it is enough to matter, turn it up. So now I'm just tightening on. Yeah, I, mean, I can definitely understand lithium not being for everybody. I 100%. I think that's something a lot of the people uh, struggle with in the... Uh, Duncan, you need... You need zero ZVL because we have some. We have something else for that. I just gotta. We gotta go over there. We gotta get together on it. You don't want ZVL because we want to do more granular control over time in the van. I can't see. Don't know who you are. Ha ha. PS Sounds in UK. Oh. Phase and time. I mean, you got to think of like, uh, so think about how far back. Well, Brad, think about how far back Duncan's rear subs are. Versus the front. I mean, you're talking like feet. Of different, like six feet of difference. Um, real world results, all as far as what I made to scroll up. Oh, no, I have not used those yet. Anyway, Brett, um, yeah, that's why I feel like the like the way your wall is laid out, all subs forward. The reason that's so popular, um, is time. And, and phase 
So all of the subs being all in the same forward plane puts them better into time than all flat like mine are or Duncan's are or whatever. It just it physically makes the adjustment before you have to do anything with uh, you know, adjusting it later. I mean, this is a like the time thing is I know a lot of people don't think it's going to change that much, but like, I mean, I, I know it does because the Azuzu, when me and Mike Singer did it on the Azuzu 10, 12 years ago, it, a DB and a half game below 30 hertz. And that was only three rows deep. Now, like, how much it would affect something like your wall, Brett? I, I don't know, because yours is so you're, you're just physically corrected a bunch of that. But I still think there's gains to be had. But I think in like Duncan's or mine or anything that's deep has to be either there, there is a gain to be had. There's no question. That's one reason why the whole thing started in the Tahoe was ch would, to change amps. Was so that I could do all this testing and pull this data myself to, to show people, like, look, like, here's the game that I made. You can do the same or more. Jo yeah, Joel's for sure. Like, how deep his is? Oh, God. I mean, think about it. Uh, say it's eight feet difference between fr the front row and this back row. Bro, that's, that's a whole quarter wavelength at, like, 30 hertz or, like, 40 hertz. It wasn't done right then. I just it's, that's the only way to go about it, Jerry. Because it uh, it's it's physically impossible that to, for them to be get into phase and get into alignment and not gain. It's just how how it is. There's really optical. So I'm digging low. I'm actually going to all optical in the Tahoe for the most part. Um, the only RCAs will be between. The rear, the subs, amps, and then the mid, mid base amps, and maybe mid range. I'm gonna run optical with this bad boy. So USB in via iPad. Um, optical out into a VXI in the back, and then that's that VXI will then distribute signal and power out. So the Azuzu was a common chamber fourth order. So the sealed side was all one side. And, um, yeah, gained, I said DB and a half below 30 hertz. But this is a long time ago. So I don't have any proof. But my Tahoe is common chamber sealed. And the gains will be shown. Exa exactly, Eric. As the waves align at the location, at the measurement location there, there there will be an amplitude increase there's just there is no question about it it just has to be done in a particular way this is a cheap berry back uh you use the bea1 you get off amazon normally or aliexpress 50 bucks it has RCA outputs, but they're really boo boo. They're not good. Optical is optical is fine, and then it does LDAC Bluetooth input as well as USB C input. Uh, a company called SMSL has another version that is more commonly available uh, that doesn't have Bluetooth input, but it has USB and still does optical output, um, which that one also tests very well. I know such thing is too smart, man. I uh. Someone asked earlier what I would do different in my audio career, and it'd be learn this advanced stuff sooner. But I think it was one of those things where I couldn't learn the advanced stuff any sooner because I just didn't know enough to learn it sooner. Yes, the PO, the P0100. Yep, that's it. Well, Brett, Brett, uh, 
do I tell you all the time? I I say all the time that you're that you're the reason that I ever figured out how to get loud or how to do a lot of this is, is because of you, dude. I got as they say, I give you your flowers every chance I get. If it wasn't for you, shit, who, who knows what I, what I, what I it, what kind of silliness I'd ended up doing. Actually, we know what kind of silly snow would ended up doing. We see what some of these other teams out here do. Oh, you're right, bro. I don't know. So I'm not sure what the B3 Pro is. I know Fio, Fio, they make all kind of cool stuff. But I mean, Optical Ant Pro, B3 Pro, I'll, I'll look it up later. To the VXI, I mean, that sounds like a solid signal path to me. The only complaint I've ever seen anyone make about um, running optical is sometimes there's not a lot of output, but there are ways to correct that with VXI. So if you have an op if you have an output issue volume wise, there are ways to correct it that aren't commonly known, with, specifically with VXI. Now we learn from each other, dude. I still. I may not comment or like talk about a whole bunch of stuff people are doing, but I'm I'm watching everything. I see you, Mister Loud C Pillar. Don't don't come out here talking about. I learned from you as if you don't have the loudest C Pillar in the country. Yeah, what's up with that? Boss, well, just put a smiley face. Working with me at. I can't pronounce that word. That's my Louisiana education. Nope, Nitro is on back burner. Nitro's on the back burner because Wagon and Tahoe and everything else. Nitro's on back burner, but Kicker knows that, and they're perfectly fine with it. No, wagon can be first. So the truck... He's been Ryan's been sending me updates the last day or two of the pillars. Um, that's one once those are in, give it a good, a good little dial in, and I think I think it'll be money, bro. Like it's so much better than it was. Even even if I'd have kept the pillars, it's so much better than it was last Aggie that it, it mid base and sub wise that I think it would do great. So one of the big complaints was always um, pull, like left mid base sub pull, and it was because of um, the left mid base was too loud, too much energy in it. And RTA wise, it looked fine, but I was having to put in so much energy to correct for the null that it would pull you left. Yes, yeah, Stuart, we in here getting? Uh, so actually, I'm back working right here, so I can. Let's see if I can angle this. There we go. Working on this little box. Let me get this out of the way. Man, a, a nice class D, like a quality class D amp, there's so indistinguishable that I don't think anyone could. I don't see how AB is any better, especially these days. Like I understand the science behind it, but not anymore. But again, per personal thoughts. So. And then to say that I have an absolute truckload of class A, you know, class AB amps. And I've got a bunch. That's what's in the Tahoe power in the mids. But like a VXI or any decent uh, class D amplifier is going to sound. I, you may be able to hear a difference, but I, I, no one could tell. You couldn't tell me which is which. You could say, okay, I hear a difference. Okay, but which is which? I don't know. I don't think it's better for anything. And again, person, it's just a personal opinion thing. Definitely better for heating up the cabin because then they do be running hot. Um, but I mean, if if they were better, and like there was a time where yeah, class D amps you could hear the switching, 
Absolutely. But it's just, uh, it's not a thing anymore. No, my personal opinion is not law. No. And I, hell, I have class A, B in my Tahoe. I do. It's just, they are, they are. Hell yeah, dude. I don't know if I have any that need to be printed. So either it's on the way or I need to double check my order stack. But I think we're all pretty caught up. I'll have to double check. I have a purple and green one over there that needs to ship out. That might be... Um, See, Damien, I tried not to bring Jeff up all the time, but if Class A B was better, that's what he would run. That's just fact. That's end of story. That man don't play around. Again, personal preference. Um, I've heard Class A, Class A B cars that are sound better than anything I've ever done. So I mean, you know, it is what it is, right? But I think it's one of those things where it. They're good, not because of the equipment, which is a lot of the SPL stuff, too. Nope, I am in Louisiana, man. Uh, so whenever they're on at six, I'm start. We, I start at eight on the podcast. We and we finish at eight, we finish at uh, I finish at 10 normally. So, Hey, and I mean, if that's what, if that's what you find, that's what you find. It is what it is. That's it. Use what you like. It's, look how big this Class A B amps are, man. Whew. Yeah, like right now it's 9.30. And as soon as I finish up bolting these down, I think we're going to call this done. I got to go tune a truck in the morning but it's just um it's eight wet sounds towers in the bed of a truck so it's a lot but it, well, i don't think it'd be bad tune you got a, a jl tweak in there I was supposed to get this out today, but my back has been, for some reason, destroyed the last couple of days. So I've been taking my time. So what I'm working on is, I call it the MV DSP 12i. It takes a six or eight channel MVI amplifier from JL Audio, the DSP one, and converts the speaker signal into RCA. It makes some... Uh, there are, there are some needed uh, switch like wire changes that have to be made inside before using it, using them as RCA. So this makes the physical wiring changes that need to be made. So it's a plug and play thing for people. It's not, it is the expensive way to go about getting a 12 channel DSP. And I have not made that a secret in any form and it's not economical. But if you are, if you want to use the JL DSP, you know, Tune 4, you want, you have a Max, you want to be integrated with it. Currently, this is the easiest way to get 12 channels of JL DSP. Not easiest. It's the simplest way, I suppose. Because like, you could make these changes without this device. You could physically make the changes. The problem will be, not really a problem, just you have to make sure you get it right. The biggest thing is if you get it wrong, your amps that you're sending the signal into, in for a bad time. And I, at this point, I've sold probably not not a ton of them, but like 
to people who don't need one, right? Like Bobby Gately doesn't need this. He knows what he's doing, but it's cool. It's different. It looks nice. Like Jerry doesn't need one. He could easily figure this out. Mobile Toys doesn't need one. They could easily figure this out, but it's just cool. Not idiot proof yet. We're getting there. As soon as I can figure out how to build in resistors that automatically attenuate it. 19 channel, we can do that. You can do a pair of MBIs, or hell, a pair of VXIs. You're on optical. Then you're doing something. And I found out today that the um, Molex plugs or the J the VXI plugs are just very fancy Molex plugs. So they're very expensive. The, like the MBI plugs from JL, affordable, like 40, 50 bucks for a set. VXI plugs, 180 a set. Found out today through the through Riven Audio that the VXIs are just Fancy Molex. So that means we can use Molex without having to cut up the uh, VXI plug. Yo, no, the VXI plugs are incredibly expensive. Ugh. A noodle over there. All right, we'll get this hot glue going. So I use this very high temp hot glue to seal to seal these connections and add a little bit of vibration proofing. It's going. Uh, going slowly but surely on the Tahoe uh, Duramax is at Ryan's shop been there for a while oh yeah so I was going to do MBI on the Tahoe and the only reason I'm considering not is just to run a pure optical signal front to back and even then I may do like a single boy it's hot I'm fat so I'm sweating <laughs> um, I, know, I know you're talking about that one post but uh, I may do VXI, like, from this thing into VXI, and then RCA into an MVI, and use that as distro for the subamps. Use, like, a 404 or something. But for mids and highs, I want to try to keep optical as far as I can. Just to get, just try to get rid of noise, right? Bro, no, it's... They see actually going hard in there. Let's try him. A message with the <laughs> title, This Motherfucker. What do you think it says? Nope, not, nothing running right now. Um... I, I try not to let them run when I do stuff in here. So, no, uh, nothing running. I know I got Dan saying pull up. Russ, crazy. But I am going to, um, I'm going to modify the plate. So, Jerry's getting one of these, but he has the eight channel version. So, it's, so six channels are A, B, C, D, E, F. His has G, H. Kind of like this, uh, this one on the wall right here does. So, I'm going to start with modifying the base plate. To go eight wide and do a test print. No. That is the only downfall of MVI is that they don't have optical. But that's how they have the additional RCA outputs is they don't, they're not processing data at 96K. They're processing it at 48K, which plenty.
yeah, so this piece use like a um RCA adapter. Oh, sorry, RCA USB. I'll make a uh, a little video about this actually to make this more simple to understand. So you put power into it. I'll go ahead and show show you all this real quick. Okay. So say you have this device in your vehicle. Got to power it, right? Start with this. So you can do power into this however you want. Any power delivery will work, whether it be plugging your cigarette lighter or it can be um, wired in, hardwired, which I'll at some point I'm gonna make a li I'll make a list and post all that so everyone can make it easily happen. So power into your USB hub. Take your RCA thing, your adapter, the other USB port. So let me see if I can make. There we go. All right. Uh, now we're making sense. Now we're cooking with oil. All right. Power in. Normally, this would plug directly into your phone or whatever it is, like, like this. Right? And that's how you get signal out. With sorry, excuse me, the optical. Plugged in there, and then this goes out to whatever your device is. What you do, instead of having this big old thing super close to your phone, or it's kind of a pain, gets you a nice little USB-C extension cable here. Plug that in. So now you have signal. There's cable. We'll just pretend this cable's still in place. Again, I'm going to make a better video of this to give you. And then you plug your phone in or iPad, anything like that. It charges via this. That way you don't kill your device. And you get optical output from this device. It's a little complex versus just Bluetoothing straight to something. But... Charges your device, gets you a high-res optical output. And it's, it's over USB, so there's no interference chances. There's none of that. Super simple. Super simple. And then even the SMSL version is even more simple than this version. There's no antenna. There's, there's none of that. I'll put together like a... No, so optical... Let me put this out of the way. So optical, that's so that, that's when the DSP comes into play. So you take your optical output coming out of that little device, and you plug that into um, your DSP as your optical input into your DSP or what whatever device you have, and then you can then send optical out to everything. Dude, bro, I wish I had some fried pickles, but I had, I had fried pickles in that'd be a, a year, I guess. Maybe longer. Yeah, so the uh, the HDMI adapter for older lightning devices, like like uh, SJC is saying, is that was the way a lot of people were doing it for a long time. Now with the USB-C standard on in Oklahoma, how long ago was that? Oh, six months. Might as well be a year. Sounds like a year to me, bud. Now I'm just putting a little bit of hot glue in here. 
cover up these connections so there's no chance of a short and vibrations issues are lessened. But got to use high temp because it'd be hot sometimes. But what Brett is talking about is Hooters. I think we went to some, uh, we went somewhere else. I don't know where we went. Well, actually, we might have been in Hooters. I lied. We might have been there in Oklahoma. Also, while I'm in here hitting this hot glue, I make sure to at least put a little bit on the, I'll show you, on the nut and bolt part. So that way, kind of seals that in place too. In which, so right, you know, you're 96K limited, but that is plenty. Hard to see. So like a lot of the new optical cables are right behind. Like they're super tough. I use Stinger uh, normally for audio builds, and I've never had never had one break. We'll let that cool down. And we call this done. I'm going to go uh, I'll go find some food and hang out with the wife for a little bit. She's still awake, hopefully. Uh, if you all have any questions about the USB stuff, I know I didn't go over it nearly as much as, as I should have. I'll go over it more next week. Um, but if you have any questions, feel free to message Damien. No, <laughs> you can message me with any questions you got. Um. Yeah. Me too, bro. Always good talking to people. Slide in my DMs, BB boy. Y'all have a great evening. Okay, bye.